Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Peace and joy and health really be with us all in this moment, but it's especially that middle one, joy, that we're able to so focus on here this morning. The ordination of Aaron and John, with the family members who are here, seminarians, my brother priest, visitors from the uh, seminaries, how good it is that we have this opportunity and for all as well who are following virtually with the streaming, thank you for your prayers, your thoughts, your participation here this morning. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Summon the tribe of Levi and present them to Aaron the priest as his assistants. They shall discharge his obligations and those of the whole community before the meeting tent by serving at the dwelling. They shall have custody of all the furnishings of the meeting tent and discharge the duties of the children of Israel in the service of the dwelling. You shall give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They have been set aside from among the children of Israel as dedicated to me. The word of the Lord.
Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Turn your eyes, O God, our shield. Look on the face of your anointed. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the Twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. The word of the Lord. El Señor esté con ustedes. Del Santo Evangelio según San Mateo. En aquel tiempo, Jesús dijo a sus discípulos, ya saben que los jefes de los pueblos los tiranizan y que los grandes los oprimen. Que no sea así entre ustedes. El que quiera ser grande entre ustedes que sea el que lo sirva, y el que quiera ser primero, que sea su esclavo. Así como el Hijo del Hombre no ha venido a ser servido, sino a servir y a dar la vida por la redención de todos. Palabra del Señor. Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. Aaron Jacob Downing. John 
Anthony McFadden. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Rely on the help the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks. John, I guess it's taken a little while longer than we had thought, but finally we're here. And the day has finally come for ordination to the diaconate. To all of you who are here, how truly welcome you are in the midst of the pandemic and the summer vacation season. Thank you for coming, and if it might be your first time at St. Peter Cathedral Parish, how glad we are that you're here with us. And of course, my brother priests, the contacts have been too few and separated during this time of the pandemic, so it's particularly good to see you. And also just to look at this group and recognize the links of support, of prayer, of affection that are particularly represented with those to be ordained. Y gracias también por la participación de la comunidad católica hispana que está siguiendo esta ceremonia virtualmente. Muy bienvenidos y gracias otra vez por sus oraciones y su presencia. But a special word of welcome and thanks to you, the families of Aaron and John, who are here today. Because your presence is particularly important. It might be said that it sums up your presence in the whole life and faith of both Aaron and John. Maybe at times, even in ways that you were not aware of, but that God knew very well. But your gift of life to your sons and the family context that you provided is a crucial element in their presence here today. You honor us with your presence, and we thank you for all that you have done for each of them. Aaron and John have spent long years in seminary formation leading up to this day, and that formation will not end with the conferral of the diaconate today. There's still a year of formal formation before, God willing, we all gather again next year for ordination to the priesthood. For those of us who've been at this, we might say, for decades, we know that the call to holy orders, your goal of fulfilling the calling to the priesthood, involves a constant, ongoing formation for all of the years that we are ordained. Some of that might be what we would call professional ongoing learning, but much will be the formation and experience and the circumstances and the people and the challenges and the joys that God will place in your path, in your places of service and ministry. And there will also be the ongoing formation of prayer. There in the daily one-on-one -on -one presence with the Lord that you must develop, you will put in the time of adoration, of petition for yourself and those entrusted to your pastoral care. But in that time of prayer, little by little, Christ will continually transform you into the man, the deacon, and hopefully the priest that he has intended you to be since before the world began. 
It's not at all exa an exaggeration to place what is happening here this morning, splendid, of course, in its reality, uh, perhaps a bit simple and restricted this time in what our senses perceive, but to place all of that in the context of history and eternity itself. And that's a part of the dignity and the responsibility that you bear from this day forward because of ordination. Looking backward, you participate in the ministerial preparation found in the Old Testament. There in our first reading that we just heard, the Lord himself says to Moses about the Levites, the assistants to Aaron the priest, they, you, have been set aside from the Israelites as dedicated to me. Today, in a way that began with your baptism, you take on more fully the calling to be dedicated to the Lord, not dedicated in a way that is your commitment or your doing, but dedicated, understood as one called out of the crowd, not because of your gifts or your worthiness, we all know better than that, but dedicated because he has called you. In so doing, like those Levites, you will assist the priests as deacons in their calling. You'll be serving the Lord by your thoughts and your words, by what you do, and at times by what you do not do. Your service is in the context of eternity, because God is so intimately part of every step of his plan of creation that he knew you before he formed you in the womb. And your service is linked to the eternal calling given to you and to all the souls that will ever be entrusted to you as they strive to pass through the narrow gate to come to the house of the Father. Your calling is a part of eternity, backwards and forwards. This year of the diaconate is one that you will live and has a special character that we were reminded of in the second reading. It'll be part of your priestly life if you live it well. But how good it is then to spend this first year in holy orders with a special emphasis on service and on charity. The reading from the Acts of the Apostles talks of rancor and human weakness already visible in the church. We don't know the specific details, but it resulted in complaints of the Greeks against the Hebrews using a word that is so painful and wrong throughout history, including our own time, discrimination. What is interesting in faith is that the solution proposed by the apostles, it's not a policy, it's not the formation of a new committee, it's not a new way to distribute rations. The solution is charity. It is service. It is the diaconate. It is you. Brothers, you will bear that calling to charity and service for every day from, of your life from here forward. And that's why you will need a life of and formation in prayer. You'll be asked in a few minutes if you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with that spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and for the whole world. You will promise to do so. Be confident. Because if you pray, you will succeed. If you don't, then you won't. You'll be asked about two other signs of the eternity that is before us, of God's kingdom made present here on earth. You'll be asked if you are prepared to embrace celibacy. That is a solemn promise you will make publicly here before the bishop and before the whole church. You don't do that on your own. Your formators have spoken with you about this extensively, and there's been prayer and discernment, both yours and the church's. You come here now not because you choose celibacy, but because we have all discerned that Christ has given you this gift. In living apart from the great good of family and marriage, of which there is such need in our day, 
and living in a state of perpetual chastity, you imitate Christ himself. You remind us all of the deep good of purity to which all are called outside and inside of marriage. You remind us of the Lord's words that in the world to come, men and women neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. In this way, you testify to the sacredness of the gift of sexuality and procreation, even by your renunciation of it for the sake of the kingdom. You'll also profess in a few minutes your respect and obedience to me and to my successors. That promise of obedience is not simply an external compliance with directives, although it will include that. More perfectly, it's an obedience of the heart. It is the same obedience as that of Christ coming into the world, and perhaps given most visibly in the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, not my will be done, but thine. Each of us loves his own will. But here in the promise of obedience, you offer that will back to Christ. Thank you for that sacrifice. Ponder it deeply and ponder it well. Finally, this ordination ceremony will conclude after your promises and the laying on of hands and your vesting with the diaconal stole with one last element. I will hand you the book of the Gospels and say to you, believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. More could not be said if we sat here and talked for another hour. Believe the Gospels. That is for the good of your soul. But it is also the heart of your service and ministry as a deacon and as a priest. None of what you will speak of and teach comes from you. It comes from faith and from belief, from receiving in your heart what the church has received from Christ in the Gospels. Many of those teachings are joyous. We're encouraged by them. But many also challenge the spirit of this world. They even make the faith unpopular in some quarters. You must hold to the whole of faith in your heart, and then you must share it by your teaching. Unafraid, confident, lovingly, we tell our age what Christ has told us, and then practice what you teach. People not only want to hear, they want to see. They want your example of patience, of faith, of joy, of courage, of love for the church. Truly receive the gospel of Christ. Brothers, we all thank God that this day has come. It is his gift to the church and to the world. There is so much work for you to do when this is over. So let's get at it. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. And so now I ask you, do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, as the Apostle urges, and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the Gospel and the Church's tradition? 
you are prepared to embrace the celibate state? Do you resolve to keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ and the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the service of God and man? Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? Do you resolve to conform your way of life to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the holy order of the diaconate. Let us kneel. Let us kneel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, Saint Michael, Perpetua and Saint Felicity.
Consecrate these chosen men. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Jesus, Son of the Living God, Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayer and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. 
Sanctified by your blessing, these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise the sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Let's stand. Veni Creator Spiritus, Mentis Tu. Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order, and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age, as you order all creation to him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned with many, with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members and united by a wondrous bond to the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as you once chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so, in the first days of your church, to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these servants of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, O Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct, so that by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people in offering the witness of a clear conscience. May they remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served, but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the parents for the blameless and holy of His name, for our good and all of His holy church. Holy Father.
Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, except we pray the oblations of our service, and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the Church. For Christ not only adorns the royal priest of the people he's made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying out of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and to strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who are holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered that here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their mayors and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you also for your servants whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the diaconate. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they've received by divine commission they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Blessed Passion and Resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you've given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just. The sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, and through this participation of the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place in peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, and all your saints. us, we beseech you into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. To whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, and sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
fieles a la recomendación del Salvador y siguiendo su divina enseñanza nos atrevemos a decir Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo santificado sea tu nombre venga a nosotros tu reino hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden nos dejes caer en la tentación y líbranos del mal. Líbranos de todos los males, Señor, y concédenos la paz en nuestros días para que, ayudados por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre libres de pecado y protegidos de toda perturbación, mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you've replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just again a word of thanks. Thank you for being here. Not only for all that it represents, your connections with those being ordained today, but in a way you who are present are the representatives of the whole church that have a great interest in what has happened here. This gift of God for the life of the church and vocations. My thanks to those who have uh, given us the musical uh, uplift during this ceremony. Thank you so very much. For those who helped and provided the, uh, the streaming, Penny Weigert and, and uh, all of you who have been filming, I ask you to keep our seminarians who are here in your prayers as they continue to reflect and pray and discern with the whole church about the very serious and eternal gifts that God gives when he calls men to this sacred service. My thanks to the folks who did the greeting, the check-ins, and the, the sanitizing. We are so very grateful in the midst of everything that's going on, your generosity and your time and your smiles in doing this. Father Bachlin for keeping me particularly on track as we go through this. To Father St. Jules as the rector of the cathedral in keeping this to be such a wonderful, warm, and receiving place. To Deacon Poli, the, uh, the original deacon who's here, we are most grateful for your help and assistance. And again, my brother priests, how much it means to have you here with us for this ceremony. Might I ask now that we all bow our heads for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. May he who has entrusted you with the preaching, with preaching the gospel of Christ, help you as since, uh, help you as you live according to his word, to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries, make you imitators of his son Jesus Christ, and ministers, ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.